Hello there, and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno, and today we're going to be painting outside the box, literally, with this simple watercolor landscape. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more like it, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I have new tutorials out. Now grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to be using my uh, Fabriano Artistico uh, watercolor block. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound. The block I'm using is 7 by 10. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, a jar of water and a paper towel. I also have a facial tissue. Um, if you're using like a soft cloth or something, you don't need a facial tissue. I'm just, I just have this because I have patterns on my paper towel and we will be needing a tissue to just blot out the sun on our sky. For brushes, I have a few on hand today because I'm not sure which I'll be using, but I have two Princeton Neptune brushes, one in a size eight and one in a size 12. I have two Princeton snaps, one in a size two and one in a size zero. These are all just round brushes. And then I have my old beat up craft brush um, you're going to need something like this where you can just like do leaves for the little bush that we're doing. If you don't have a brush like this, you could do it with a sea sponge, um, but just test it out first so you know that you're getting kind of the effect that you want. Okay, so to start, let me just get my brushes out of the way. To start, on my watercolor pad, and if you don't have a watercolor pad, just tape it down to a board just so it doesn't buckle on you. But what I've done is I've, I know it looks crazy because there's a lot of tape here, but initially, basically it's just um, a masked out square and it's equal distance top and bottom, but I've left more space on the left than I did on the right. Okay, so you want to offset it to the right. And then after that was done, I just put tape down across to make that horizon line. And it's about, um, maybe a th not quite a third to two thirds, but a little pit, a little pit, a little bit below the halfway point. Okay. So to start, I'm going to mix up a color for the sky and I'm going to make kind of a bluish kind of gray color. I'm going to use my uh, Prussian blue. I'll actually move this over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to take a mixture of Prussian blue and sepia and it should give us this nice kind of grayish color pretty neutral i'm just going to put some sepia in my palette over here first because i don't want to just go in with too much sepia to start okay and you can see you get kind of this gray green color okay maybe a little bit more Prussian blue. And I'm going to water that down. And that's going to be our sky. This brush holds a lot of water. So just water it right down. And I'm just going to put it all on the sky. That's a little dark. So I'm going to wash it down a bit. And you can tip your board. Okay, so the water runs down. I'm not adding any more paint now. I'm just adding water just to kind of thin this out. And it doesn't have to be even. It's actually better if you've got a little bit of variation in your sky. Like so. So that's good and wet. And I'm going to put this brush aside. I want to make sure I get that horizon line nice and even. You can go in and pick some pigment up if you think it's too heavy in some areas, just like that. Just to make it look like there's kind of ominous kind of clouds in the sky. Okay. Now I'm going to put this big brush aside because it holds so much water and that's too much. 
and I'm just going to go back into that mixture and just add some darker areas in there. And remember, this is going to dry a little lighter. Okay, so I'm just putting little wisps of this deeper color in there. And I can also go in with this brush too and pick up some highlights as well. Just like that. Then I'm going to go in while this is still wet. I'm going to bunch up my facial tissue so it's reasonably round. And I'm just going to go in and tap in as round a circle as I can above that horizon line. I'm not getting it very round, but that's okay. We can go and fix it. Now I'm just going to round it out a bit. So I'm just going to take this same uh, sky color and just round that out. And where it's seeping into the um, sun, that's okay. I kind of want that effect. I want it to look like there's um, clouds in front of that sun. So you can actually even just drag your brush along and go into that into the moon or sun. I guess it's pretty, probably a moon because it looks more like a night scene, just like that. And then I want to throw a little bit of some pinky color in there. So I'm taking a permanent red light, which is a little orangey. And I'm going to add some permanent blue violet to that. And we'll get this kind of, I guess, burgundy-ish kind of pinky color. Okay, and I'm just going to wet my brush a bit. Just get a little bit of this. And I'm just going to start putting some of this in while this is still wet. That's too orange. I'm going to put a little bit more purple in that. And I don't like that. That's too dark. So I'm just going to water that down. And I'm kind of, I'm going in with water, with this paint and water while this is like semi wet. So I may get some blooms, but we'll see what happens. If I get some blooms, we'll work them out somehow. A little purple, a little bit up here. Just going in with a clean brush and kind of moving this around. You can drag some of that purple across the moon as well. See, there's a little bit of a bloom up there, but I'm not going to sweat it. We'll just kind of blend that all out. And I think I want some of this kind of gray back in here, a little deeper up here. Okay, put a little bit of a darker color up here. And then to save time, I may speed up this process and dry it with my heat tool. I'll see how it goes. And I'm going to rinse this brush off, tap it off on my paper towel, and just kind of soften these little clouds that are in front of the moon and just soften the edge of it a bit just like so okay it doesn't have to be a perfect circle and it doesn't have to have a crisp sharp edge to it Just tapping some of that purple in here. So it is drying a little unevenly. I thought it would because I waited a little long before I went back in with that um, darker pigment. Okay, 
So I'm going to leave it at that and let that dry on its own just for a bit and then to finish it off I'll probably use my heat tool just to save some time. So I'm just going to play around with this a bit. I think I'm not happy with the moon though because I think I've lost a little bit of it so I'm just going to wet it and that's going to create a little bit of a bloom around it but that's okay. It does not have to be perfect. And I'll just go back in and pick that up again. Okay, so you see it's kind of fuzzy around there and I'm fine with that. It does not need to be a perfect circle. And I'm just going to put those clouds back in there and just soften that edge back up. Okay, so it can be totally blurred out at the bottom. I actually think that looks kind of neat. But I will go in with a little more of that wash of the uh, gray color and just deepen it up in some spots. Just like that. I think I'm overworking it, starting to get a little patchy. I just want it a little darker up in this corner. So anyway, like I say, I will let it sit and then I will finish it off with my heat tool. I don't want to hit it with the heat tool right now um, because that will stop all those bleeds, okay? So I think that's good. So now I'm going to take off the tape for the water line. I don't want to put tape on that and have it ruin something up okay, there. Okay, so for the water, I'm going to use that same mixture of the blue, but I'm going to add in a little bit more um, Prussian blue. And then I'm also going to add in some ultramarine deep. That might have been a little too much ultramarine deep. Also go back with some Prussian blue. I'll just bring this over here so you can see what I'm mixing up. Okay, now that's way too blue. I just wanna add a little bit of sepia to that. I think that's enough. I just don't want a bright blue. So then I'm just gonna rinse some of that off my brush and I'm just going to test that color before I throw it down and I think that's pretty good maybe a little bit more sepia so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this blue right across the top carefully I've got a little bit of white showing there and I don't want that. You know, like I always say, if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so now I'm just gonna continue to just kind of bring this down. And it's gonna get lighter towards the center where the moon is and a little lighter towards the bottom. Just like that. And again, you can tip your paper if it helps it run down a little easier. Like so. I probably should have been using my bigger brush, but I just didn't want to make it too wet. And I want a nice even bottom so I want to make sure I come right up to that tape line. Like so. 
I still see white down there. I don't want that. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you can take even a little bit of that pinky purple and just tap some of that down in here so it's kind of like reflective from the sky. Okay, and then I'm going to take my size two round. I want my size two round. And I'm going to just go in and kind of pick up some reflection. So I'm just going in with a damp brush. Okay, and I'm just picking that paint up. And as you pick it up, it's going to seep back in and that's fine because we don't want really harsh lines. We just want some lines that kind of hint at the reflection from the moon. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to also go in with some more of the darker color. Okay, and we'll just run that through the water. And that will also kind of accentuate a reflection there from the moon. It's very subtle. Okay, so I'm just going in with darker pigment. And it's all going to bleed out. Because this was fairly wet, it's kind of losing that reflection. I'll have to go in and do that again. Just pick it up. Tap it off on your paper towel. Okay, just kind of wavy. Just like that. And I'm gonna let that sit for a minute, a minute, a minute. And I'm gonna mix up more of that watercolor. A little bit more brown. Okay, and I'm just going to go in and put even deeper value just up at the horizon. I'm using a very small brush. I should probably be using something just a little bigger, but I just don't want to saturate it too much. Okay. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush and just kind of try to accentuate that reflection a little bit. Just like that. And then I'll just soften these edges a bit. Just to get those highlights a little more distinct. And this is kind of an expressive, um, semi loose landscape, okay? So you're not really looking for perfection on the water, that's for sure. So I'm just going to speed things up a bit here. Basically, um, I don't know if it was because I've been working so much on non-cotton paper, but I was having trouble getting the water to look the way I wanted it to look. So pretty much all I was doing here was just adding paint and kind of picking it up and just doing it in quick kind of horizontal strokes just to kind of get that wave and that effect of um, the reflection on the water. 
there you just saw me point into a big bloom in the water that I wasn't happy with. So I just kept reworking it to just try to minimize that as much as possible. Um, and then it just got to the point where I thought I was just kind of overworking it. And really, I kind of like the effect. It's kind of painterly and just not so, you know, smooth and blended perfectly. So in the end, I was pretty happy with it. So we'll leave it at that and we'll let that dry. Okay, so this is pretty much dry now, but before I take the tape off, I'm just gonna put it aside for a minute. And I just want to do a quick test. I'm just gonna grab a piece of scrap paper. And I just wanna do a little test of my leaves before I just dive in and start throwing leaves on here. I wanna make sure that I'm actually getting the right leaf shape that I want. I'm gonna do, I should need to wet these paints a little bit. I'm going to start off with um, Payne's Gray. Okay, so I'm going to put quite a bit of it in my palette here. I don't want to run out. And I'm also going to be adding in black. So I'll put some black up here in the corner. And this is why I want you to test it, because if you're using like a sea sponge or something um, you know, you're gonna have a different brush than me. So you would just want to make sure that you're getting that look of the leaves that you want. Okay. So if I just tap this, I get this kind of stippled effect. But if I tap it and kind of turn it a bit, I get different shapes. And that I'm kind of happy with. Okay, so we're gonna take part of our tape off because I don't wanna do the full reveal at this point, but we will need to take the tape off this side. A bit at the top, like so, and a bit at the bottom. So now we're just gonna go in and do our tree. And I'm not doing I'm not doing it like a tree with a big trunk. It's going to be almost like a, a branchy, a tall branchy bush more than like a tree. I'm not going to do the tree trunk um, in full view at all. It's going to be almost like it's kind of peeking out and then hanging back over. You'll see once I get into it, hopefully it will do what I want it to do. Okay, so we've got our panes gray and I'm going to start at the top because I want it to peak outside the border at the top a bit and that's not wet enough let me get more gray here i'm actually going to keep this handy because i want to there we go okay so we're going to do a couple of leaves at the top like that and I'm turning my brush so I don't get the same pattern everywhere you don't want to just keep tapping and getting the same leaves everywhere okay and then we're going to come outside of the frame like so and then I just want to end it just a little bit below that water line and you're not doing like really dense, we're not putting leaves like everywhere. It's not gonna be a really dense tree or bush rather. Put some out here. And you just keep tapping. I'm gonna bring it down here a bit. I'm gonna go in with some black now to get some kind of, you know, different values. More of the gray. And I wanna come out just a little bit. I don't wanna get too carried away. Have some kind of almost hanging down a bit like that. I 
So once you get your basic shape down, then you can go in with the black and kind of heavy up the center a bit. Get more of that gray. And we're gonna leave some white space so we can get some branches in there as well. I actually wanna bring it out a little bit more here. Maybe there. And as you get towards the outside edge of it, um, just go a little more sparingly with the leaves. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the black and just do a little heavier sections. I didn't wanna do just straight black. I didn't want it to look like a, like a complete, um, you know, black silhouette. I wanted to have the gray in there. And I don't want to overdo it, so I think I'm going to stop at this. Put some black down here. And I think that's good. So I'm going to put the craft brush away because I don't want to overdo it. Then I'm going to take one of my tiny, one of the two tiny brushes that I have. And I think... Just to be safe, I'm probably going to go with the zero. So now I mentioned I don't want it to have like a big tree trunk. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a kind of a thin stem almost coming up. That's not very thin. Just like that. Maybe some branches out to there. So it's more of like a, a bush, like I say, okay. I really should be using my liner brush because even this is a little thicker than I wanted. I don't think it's the brush's fault. I think it's my hand is not steady today. There we go. There's a nice thin line. So to kind of do your little branches where you see these clumps of leaves you don't want to you know have too many you have one coming up here and i'm not going to do branches out to all these kind of leaves that are hanging out i don't want it that literal just a little hint of some branches is all you need on this Maybe one just up here, a very fine one up there. Maybe a couple coming out here. Okay, so as usual, I don't want to get too involved in this. And then I'm just going to do a few little flicks of some grasses down here. Now this is where I should be using my liner brush, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm actually going to put the tape back because I don't want it to um, come past this water line. Okay. Maybe I'll even put a little piece of tape right here. Because I really don't want my grass to come outside the frame. Okay. So I'm going to start past down the, t the tape. That way I can get a nice fine flick just like that okay just a little bit i could have thinned it out a little more so it wasn't so sketchy Actually, I don't mind it sketchy, that kind of dry brush effect. 
have one hanging right out, curling down. Like that. Okay, so I think that's it. Actually, I think I'm not so happy with the tree. I'm going to put a couple more branches in. Or not branches, leaves. Just kind of, just coming out a little bit past. So it's not so full. There we go. I know that seemed like it was not worth it and silly, but I don't know. I just felt it needed to be done. So now we're going to take the tape off and we'll see what we have. So there you go. There is our watercolor landscape that we got from painting outside the box. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And if you do give this a try, like I always say, and you're on Instagram, please be sure to share and tag me so I can have a look. That's it for today, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me and supporting my channel. Take care and I'll see you next time.